At first I was confused. And then I was terrified. Grace? It was twenty after midnight, and for the first time since I was a child, I saw my best friend. The problem is, she died a long time ago. Let me in, Jessica. Nearly jumping out of bed, I stared through the thin red curtains and stained glass. Her face was muddled in the darkness. But I knew it was her. I knew. Something told me not to look further, that, that if I were to stare into her eyes, I might never come back. Still, I had to be sure. I had changed locations recently, moving to the 14th floor of an apartment building in a forgotten part of Los Angeles. There had been complaints of rats and other vermin, and though the place wasn't yet condemned, it was most likely on its way. Jessica... The voice repeated, seeming to float gently just outside the glass. I summoned all of my courage and asked her the only question I could think of. How are you here? The soft breeze from the window suddenly became violent and one strip of wallpaper tore clean off of the wall. You know how. Now let me in. And with that, I fell to my knees and began to cry. Ten years later, ten years of therapy and ten years of prayer and ten years of them saying I had imagined it all. That I had imagined the thing in the forest. It hadn't been there when the police returned. Oh, sweetie, you made that all up. Everyone has a different way to cope, my mother had said. Maybe I, maybe I did need to cope, but, but I hadn't imagined anything. Ten years ago, Grace and I had gone together into the woods to try and make a fire. We weren't once to be outdone by the boys, and earlier that week, my brother had made a very stupid comment, even by his standards. Girls are too dumb to make fires, the Boy Scout of three weeks had stated with a grin. That was more ammunition than we needed. And later that day, Grace and I had researched different fire-building techniques before finally going with the old newspaper and matches routine. Our town sat at the edge of a national forest, and we knew of various campsites we could sneak into that would give us a hidden place to practice in silence. We lied to our parents, as they never would have let us venture out so far. And as it just so happened, we did become lost on our way. Even worse, almost as if planned, the rain began to pour down heavily and soak what little clothes we had brought on our journey. Not having had the foresight to bring a jacket... We did the best we could and sought shelter under a rocky overhang we hadn't seen before. The rain fell in clumps now, and if I had been with anyone else, I might have felt afraid. But not Grace. Though she wasn't my actual sister, she may as well have been. I loved Grace, and I trusted her. I trusted her with my life. Within a minute or two, I felt something soft and warm around my ankle before being pulled violently away from my friend, and through an unseen hole in the rocks, I managed to stay conscious as I screamed out to my friend for help. Grace! Suddenly, I was in a vast cavern that shone brightly, lit with some powerful force that I still can't explain. The luminescence was almost blinding, yet in my state of confusion, I managed to stand. And once I had been pulled inside completely, the warm thing that had grabbed me relented its hold on my leg. Maybe... It figured there was no escaping now anyway. What I saw next is so frightening that I doubt you'll ever believe me. Nearly crying, I spun around rapidly to examine the cave and found that I wasn't alone. Many of my neighbors were there, and even some of my friends. How, how, did, how did... My voice stammered and fell short as I realized something was very wrong. They... They weren't moving, and they all looked different, almost shiny. Though to anyone else the figures might have passed for human, I knew these people, and I could tell. Their eyes, though the correct color, were blank and frightening. They were alive, yet dead. I began to back up slowly when I felt a hand grasp my shoulder. I screamed and fell backwards onto the far too warm floor of the cave. Jessica, Grace whispered, we have to get out of here. Not even thinking twice, she had crawled through the rocky hole after me. I wondered to this day if I would have done the same for her.
We held hands as the two of us walked backwards towards the opening, never letting our eyes off the creatures that lined to the walls all around us. And then they moved. Our neighbors and our friends began to walk towards us. Some shuffled awkwardly while others began to do something far worse. Their, their bodies split open, revealing a sharp, elaborate group of tentacles where their heart and organs should have been. The figures circled around us and I knew that there could be no escape. Her words cut through the darkness. Light the match, Jessica, she called up to me, having already torn the newspaper we had planned on using for a fire into a small pile on the floor. What? I asked shakily, but there was no fear in her voice. Do it. They're going to kill us anyway, and I don't want to be one of those things. Neither did I. What else could I do but light the match? And with it, the entire cavern began to erupt in flames. The monsters watched in shock and then rage. Their anger made them fast as they shuffled towards us. But we were fast too, young and fast. And we crawled through the rocks with a speed we didn't know we had, the intense heat of the fire burning our ankles and shoes. I emerged out of the small hole first with Grace right behind me. But when I knelt down to offer her my hand, I was, I was a split second too late. I could... <sighs> I could feel her fingers scrape along my palm as she screamed and was pulled back into the inferno. That was ten years ago. Almost to the day. Let me in, Grace whispered from the outside of the fourteenth floor window. I realized then that she wasn't floating, but, but clinging. The tentacles from her chest dug deeply into the stone and concrete of the old apartment building. <sighs> maybe, maybe I will let her in. I think I owe her that much. My old friend's words seemed to echo through the old apartment. Let me in, Jessica. So I did. Pushing aside the thin red curtains, I stared through the stained glass into the eyes of my long dead, or so I thought, best friend. For a moment I became lost, and as her eyes met mine, they seemed to smile glowing a bright red that outdid the new red curtains I had purchased only two weeks earlier. Her figure couldn't be made out completely in the darkness, but my mind had already been made up. I owed her this much at least. <laughs> Whatever happens next, I owed her this much. The apartment was a much older design than maybe most of you are familiar with, the cracked stained glass window went from the ceiling to the floor, now only open a crack at the very bottom. Something like this would probably be against the regulation nowadays and was just another reason for the old apartment building to be shut down completely. I had read a story when I was younger about a little girl falling to her death from such a flawed design. As I reached under the handle and began to pull upwards, I wondered if this might be the very apartment where it had happened. Silly thought, I know, but it was there anyway. I thought of how easy it would be for a person to fall to their death from such a place. With a creak, I pushed the window open completely, a warm breeze making its way eerily into my bedroom. Grace smiled, and her red eyes made me step back into the corner near my bed. Looking up at the silver cross next to me, I figured it wouldn't do any good if things went bad. She wasn't a vampire, after all. She was something else entirely. Something dead, yet alive. Something ancient, yet young. Very young. I witnessed the monster's figure now coming more into view. Grace was still a little girl 
just as she had been that night many years ago. After she had been taken, life had continued for me, school and college and new friends. For Grace, life had ended that night that she saved me. Grace took a step forward into the apartment, her wet tentacles retreating momentarily under her clean white dress stitched with yellow dandelions. Mind if I sit down? She asked. Please do, I replied cordially. Her strong hands reached out and grasped the old rocker my mom had given me before passing. She sat, and something caught her eye. An old photo of us two together. <laughs> As she picked it up to take a closer look, her eyes changed from a bright, piercing red to the pale green I had remembered. It had been taken the summer before she died by her father. In the picture, the two of us were standing at the edge of a pond near our home, embracing each other like sisters, and smiling. <laughs> we had always been smiling. Grace's eyes looked over at me. Y you saved this, huh? There was silence for a moment. Of, of course I saved it. And then... And then sadness. You're my best friend, Great. I was your best friend. She interjected, and for a moment I could see the underlying resentment for the first time. I couldn't blame her. My friend's eyes turned red again. Though the room was only partially lit, I could see the outline of a tentacle making its way slowly across the floor towards me. I was ten or so feet away, and it stopped just a few inches away from my ankle as she spoke again. So, why do you let me in, Jessica? Her fiery red pupils examined me closely. Want to become like we are? She continued. Grinning as the tentacle inched its way closer, I could feel it at the edge of my skin now as if it were a creature sniffing its prey before biting deep. I... I wanted to say I'm sorry, Grace. Surprise fell over her face. You're... sorry? She repeated, her full figure coming into view. An endless series of tentacles filled the room now, fluttering angrily. The ceiling fan crashed onto the floor as they slid over it, and I watched in horror as the largest tentacle grasped the photo of us together and shattered the glass frame. I have something better than sorry, Jessica. I'm going to make you like I am. You're going to see what it's like to... It was my turn to interrupt, and I wanted to keep my promise this time. You wanted to what? She asked quietly, but there was a rage underneath her words. For the first time, I could feel the tentacles wrap quickly around my ankles and begin to dig in. I'm so sorry, Grace. I continued, pulling out the revolver I had concealed in my jacket and shooting her twice in the chest. There was no scream of pain as the tentacles retreated back under her dress, nor any look of betrayal. My best friend only fell back into the corner of the floor and stared up at me. There was no anger anymore. Her eyes changed completely now from the bright red of a monster back to the pale green of her youth. I walked over, tears now falling easily from my face onto the floor below. She spoke more quietly now as the life began to drain from her body. Don't be sorry, Jessica. She whispered, her pale green eyes looking into mine. I could tell she wanted to say something else, tears now falling down her face as well. But she was no longer able to. My friend didn't have long left, I realized, and she was only able to make one last gesture. Reaching out towards the broken picture I had kept of us as children, her eyes met mine one last time. It was cracked and broken now, facing downwards on the floor in front of us. I did as she asked, lifting the photo from the floor and placing it into her hands carefully. She smiled. And then I sat down with her, protecting Grace like I should have done so many years ago. I put my face up against hers, and we both gazed downwards onto the old photo of us together. We had just been children. 
But even then, Grace and I knew that we were best friends forever. Hey there once again kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give you a big thank you for watching tonight's video. If you guys ever wanted to help support the show, you can always do so if you watch the show on youtube.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, or find the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime podcast on iTunes, on Google Play, and on Spotify. And also, if you ever want to check out my wife's tea shop, it's etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea, where she sells hand-blended herbal teas, in the theme of Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter and Final Fantasy and the like. You can find the link for it, as well as many, many, many other links, in the description down below. And, drumroll please, a big, big, big thank you to everybody supporting me at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. People such as... Tacia Lynn Ginobaga Arneo, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Dr. Strawberry, Chempinski, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Elyasin, Buddy Burrows, Stephen Van Hus, Kai Albertson, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Chance Burnett, Diane Krause, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Titty Connoisseur, <laughs> really? Titty Connoisseur? Melissa Swagart, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, Cross Rights, The Ginger Bros, Eliminator 86, Andrew Steinberg, Jason Sistma, Holy Realm, and Rafael Rodriguez. Thank you so much to you guys out there on Patreon, to all of you listening to either the podcast or the YouTube show. And that is everything, guys. Thank you so much for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>